My name is Dr. Karen Herbst, and I'm going to perform an exam for lipedema. So the first thing that I do is I want to examine the head. So I'm going to feel the top of the head, and I want to make sure that I'm feeling bone right away. So tapping and making sure you touch bone is really important because you can actually get lipedema tissue on the top of the head. I also like to feel around to the back of the head, around the lymph nodes, and these feel really great. You want to just make sure, again, you feel more firm tissue and not a lot of fat tissue. Then I'm going to feel around the neck, and I'm going to be rolling my fingers on the neck and also looking for larger lumps in the neck. I'm just doing a gentle roll, looking for very small two to three millimeter nodules, which I'm now appreciating on the front part of the neck here. And I also feel some larger masses around here on the back. The next thing I'm gonna do is look at the supraclavicular area here and I'm gonna ask her to shrug her shoulders up to see if they depress. Not quite so high, bring your shoulders down a little perfect. And you can see that the fat continues to stay elevated in the supraclavicular area. Now I'd like you to ask you to make a small hole in your fist and breathe in. Okay, and that also does not depress the fat in the supraclavicular area. So there's a significant amount of, of fat up here, and to me that signifies that there may be some lymphatic dysfunction. Then I'm going to examine the chest. And I'm looking again for those small nodules, so I'm using that rolling motion of my fingers, just moving the skin around gently. And I definitely am feeling some small nodules in the chest. And then I'm gonna press a little bit just to get an idea of how thick this fat tissue is on the chest. And this tissue um, is definitely, um, definitely has some thickness to it. I do not see any petechiae. I do not see any cherry angiomas, which would suggest that there may be some underlying capillary fragility. I also just gently palpate the tips of the shoulders here just to see again if there are some nodules all the way up to the shoulders and I'm not really feeling much here. I check how heavy the breast tissue is and her breasts are definitely heavy suggesting that she may be carrying some fluid in there. Next I move to the hand. I'm going to flex the hand backward and I'm going to look at the MCP joints here to see if there's any fat tissue in there. And usually in lipedema, the hands are spared. And in this case, I don't really see much fat tissue between the MCPs, maybe a little bit right here uh, between one of the joints. Then I check the base of the thumb, looking to see if there's any fat tissue there. I can pinch it up. I can also roll my fingers in that area just to see if there are, there's any nodular tissue there and I'm not feeling any. Um, I also look for a cuff at the wrist by bending the hand back again. Um, when there's a cuff, you'll see uh, a large amount of uh, tissue that's rounded at the wrist, and I'm not seeing that either. Now I'm gonna start palpating right at the wrist to see if there's any nodular tissue here, and maybe I'm feeling a, a, a little bit, but not much. Her, her fat tissue is pretty smooth. So now I'm gonna move to the cubital area, and I this is where the cubit nodes are, and I'm gonna palpate around here looking for nodules in the tissue, and sure enough, she does have some. Now you can see nodules in the tissue here in obesity as well as in lipedema, so it's not pathognomonic, but it's definitely helpful because it suggests that there is some underlying lymphatic dysfunction. I also like to run my finger down the bottom of the arms toward the fifth digit here, and I'm looking for small lumps that will res reside along the lymphatic, and I try and see if I can feel those all the way down to the wrist, and in this case, I can. I also like to look here over the brachioradialis for any nodular tissue, and there is a, a small amount here that I can feel, not a lot, but the rest of this tissue is feeling pretty smooth. And I know she does a lot of exercise, so that's obviously showing that she's doing a good job. She does have some fibrotic tissue here on the uh, medial upper arm, but that actually can be normal. And then I like to look at the axillary area. I look for acanthosis nigricans or darkening of the skin here, which I don't see. And then I'm also going to palpate looking for nodular tissue here or any lymph nodes. And I'm not finding a lot. And I just make sure I'm consistent and look at the other side. Again, not much going on here. And then I'm just gonna re-examine this other hand here. 
Again, looking to see if there's fat tissue in between the MCP joints, and she has a little bit more fat on this hand. Are you right-handed? Yes. Yes, okay. And then I'm again gonna look at the base of the thumb, and she has a little bit of fat tissue here, but it is not nodular fat tissue. Again, looking for the cuff at the wrist and any nodular tissue. There is a, a, some firmer tissue down here, but it's not very nodular. Again, some nodular tissue over the brachioradialis, following the lymph node down the arm, looking for this nodular tissue, which I again feel here. Checking for the fibrotic tissue that's present here. And again, just feeling all the fat tissue to see if there are any nodules or if it's heavy, and it's really not heavy. She has light, fluffy fat on her upper arms. So then I'm going to examine the abdomen, which I do from the back. I reach my hands around and I'm gonna start pressing in under the ribs to see if I can find any nodular tissue or any abnormalities in the fat tissue at all. She's got a rare nodule in the tissue, but this actually feels pretty healthy. Maybe some flat nodules here laterally. And then as I move medially, I'm finding quite a few nodules in the tissue. especially down here, but mainly in this area right here. She does have a larger abdomen, and one of the things that you can see in women with lipedema as they start to develop metabolic syndrome is that their abdomens do become larger. This does not mean she does not have lipedema. It just means she's actually developing the metabolic consequences that can happen in lipedema. And I think because we are able to feel lipedema tissue here, that suggests to me that I'm gonna find lipedema tissue on the lower part of the body. So I'm gonna go ahead and examine the hips. I'm gonna turn her a little bit towards me. And I'm palpating the, the tissue here and it's, it's definitely nodular here. So I'm feeling uh, what I think is likely lipedema tissue here. And as you can see, she has um, quite a, um, a large amount of hip tissue compared to, for example, her upper chest. So uh, this disproportion in the fat on the body suggests to me that she does have lipedema. I'm also looking at her thighs here, and you can see that she has some superficial varicosities, and that tells me that we really need to investigate her veins further to see if she has some varicosities deeper inside of her leg that could have insufficiency. So I think she would benefit from a venous duplex ultrasound. You can see that she's losing some elasticity here in the upper part of her thigh, but it's actually still pretty good. And I'm gonna check for nodular tissue, trying to avoid those varicosities so I'm not feeling directly on top of them. And she's got pretty thick tissue throughout here there's not a lot of nodular tissue in here. Does that mean she doesn't have lipedema? Well, not necessarily because if she's got a lot of fluid in these tissues that's not getting moved out, it can actually mask those nodules. And if she would do something to help decrease the amount of fluid in the tissue here or improve the fat, uh, perhaps by decreasing her risk for diabetes, we may be able to palpate the nodules at that time. Then I um, palpate the back part of the leg, again looking for that nodular tissue or a breakdown in the tissue, especially under the popliteal space. I'm gonna have you turn around. Good job. So um, I always palpate the popliteal space looking for uh, nodules in the tissue. Um, it should, they should have some nodules because there are lymph nodes back here and you actually have a good access to vascular tissue here and I'm not really feeling uh, much that's abnormal. I do um, feel a nodule down here on the bottom, but that's it. Is that tender? Yeah. That's tender. And then I'm gonna feel um, on the side of the leg right here, um, I can definitely feel some nodules here. And the rest of the tissue actually feels pretty smooth. Um, but I do notice that she's filled in the area around her Achilles. That suggests to me that she has uh, extensive uh, lipedema tissue actually down to the foot. And it also encircles her malleoli on both sides. And um, you can see that, again, her, her 
backside is um, out of proportion on the bottom compared to the upper part of her body. Uh, this tissue here is also thick. It's a little bit fibrotic. And I think this tissue can actually be lost with weight loss. So this is likely um, more lifestyle-induced fat tissue here in these locations compared to this tissue here, which uh, is very nodular and is likely more lipedema type tissue. I also check for the heaviness of the buttocks and her buttocks are definitely heavy, suggesting that this is not just fat tissue, that she's retaining fluid in this area. I also lift the hips and she's also got pretty heavy hips, again, suggesting that she's retaining fluid in here. Um, I think if I pressed on her, um, it's likely that we would not get uh, pitting, so this is non-pitting edema, which is pretty classic for lipedema, and uh, there's no pitting that occurs there. So you want to turn around for me? Um, so can I ask you to actually bend over and put your hands close to the ground? So you can see her hyperflexibility. Okay, come on up. So she would actually get a point in the Biton scale for um, being hypermobile. Um, she is unable to put her thumbs down to her arms, but she does remember um, as a younger girl that she was able to do that. So historically, we would give her two points for that. Uh, we wanna bend the finger back. I can feel she's got a little arthritis there, but she can go beyond 90 degrees. So she would get a point for each of those. So one, two, three, four, Five, and then we're going to look at her arms to see elbows to see if they're hyperflexible, and they're actually pretty straight, so she would get no points for that and no points for that. So I think she does have a component of hypermobility. Do you have pain in your joints? My hips, my knees in the past. Yeah, everything kind of hurts at times. Yeah, so she's got um, chronic joint pain, so that's a minor criteria for hypermobility. Do you have any stretch marks anywhere? I thought here. You've got some stretch marks down there. I don't look at anything. I don't look at my body. Yeah, it's kind of hard. So if she has, yep, she does have stretch marks. Yeah, very good. So that's another minor criteria. So with her Biton score and the joint pain and the stretch marks, she would qualify as having hypermobility, which could be contributing to her progression of her lipedema and her inability to lose weight. Um, in this circumstance, I would really like to see some of the labs to see how, um, how close you are to developing diabetes because I do think that's influencing your body shape on top of the fact that I think you have lipedema. I think it was one point and I'm very vitamin D deficient. Okay, so most people are you know, vitamin D deficient and the more fat tissue you have, it tends to suck up that vitamin D, so that makes sense. But for example, looking at the hemoglobin A1C, looking at your lipid profile, looking at your blood pressure, um, these are some of the things that we would use to, to classify you as having metabolic syndrome. Normal to low blood pressure. Normal to low blood pressure, which is pretty common in women who have lipedema. How about your lipid profile? A low HDL. I think it's fine. You think it's normal? Yeah. So that's really, that's actually really good. And that says that on the spectrum of metabolic syndrome that you've actually reduced it or you're not very far um, into having metabolic syndrome. Do you have a fatty liver? I have no idea. You don't know if you have a fatty liver. So that would be another exam that I would want to do because of the central fat that you have. I would want just an ultrasound, which can is non-invasive. It's, it's not very expensive, and it tells us whether you have fat in your liver or not. If we did find fat in your liver, we could do an MRI of the liver and actually quantitate the amount of fat, and that gives us an, some more information about metabolic syndrome. So. Just in a nutshell, I do think you have lipedema, and I do think you have hypermobility, and I think you have metabolic syndrome on top of that, and I encourage you to continue doing what you're doing, your diet, your exercise. It would be nice if um, we could have a discussion and decide what other things that you could do to actually reduce this um, metabolically bad tissue so that you're just left with your lipedema tissue, which tends to be a little bit more healthier tissue. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome.